The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to you today in a time of extreme need. Men and women around the world have long been afraid of a global pandemic. Until now, these fears have been completely unfounded. Unfortunately, on this day, April 3rd, 2015, there is no reason to be calm. The disease is characterized by a complete loss of mental faculty, a heavy decay of the skin, and a tendency to wander around the woods for an extended period of time. We do not yet know if those afflicted with the disease have a taste for human flesh. However, we can assure you that assumptions will be made based off little or no facts for the sake of ratings. Now let's play those clips again. I don't know about you, Felix, but I wasn't scared by that at all. Really? You think that's something to worry about? Nah, only old men worry about things like that. If you can't bridle your fear, that's on you. As for me, I don't believe in any of this zombie apocalypse hocus pocus BS. It's all a bunch of smoke and mirrors. You know that. What did that sound like to you? Well, it's 1034. Probably the UPS guy. He might have my Amazon Prime. Usually says hi, not... <laughs> That's true. He could have the influenza or the cold. There's no chance that it's a... I'm not scared. I would open the door, but it's cold in here. Felix, batten down the hatches! It had to be done. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Okay, Felix, let's take stock of everything we have to survive. Iodized salt. Check. Unlimited supply of Buffalo Wild Wing wet naps. Check. Two machetes. Check. Fun dip. Check. Taste your choice coffee, instant. Not on the list. It is now. Finally a blowtorch. A cauterizing wounds, in case a zombie bites ya. Check. These things will keep us going for a while, but I think what we need to do is create three devices that will help us survive the zombie apocalypse in this crazy, crazy world. What could we build? What about a pair of shoes that don't make sound when we walk through leaves in the woods? I think I might want to go in a different direction. Ben, I really need these shoes. I'm very loud in the woods. How are you gonna be walking through the woods if you're dehydrated? If you're dehydrated, you're dead. What we need to figure out is a way to make a water filter using just the supplies in the shop. Then you can drink some water, get hydrated, and run through the woods silently all you want. We have a case of Thin Mints, so we're good on food, but the human body also needs water. Got some samples here. Quote unquote, dirty water. This is melted snow. It's not too bad, but it could be better. And this is from a creek in Madison that will remain unnamed. So not only do you have whatever was in the creek, but you also have runoff from all the melting snow. So this one's pretty bad. We're going to try to build a water filter using things you might have laying around the house. Key element to any filter is charcoal. So I got this cowboy wood charcoal. And this is that type of charcoal where it's actually made from pieces of wood. If you get something like Kingsford charcoal, it's often compressed sawdust. So there might be glue or formaldehyde or other things in it that you probably should avoid. This stuff is supposed to be all natural, but it's hard to light, which means there's no chemicals in it. So I think this is a good way to get some charcoal. We're gonna have to smash it up though. You know when you uh, start a campfire and your logs are smoky and they take a long time to burn down, but once they get to embers, they keep going for quite a while? Well, that's what charcoal is. It's wood where all of the moisture and everything else has been kind of cooked out of it, leaving just the parts that burn really well. All right, let's smash it up using this Ben Heck Show t-shirt. Oh, here we go. Maybe I'll find a diamond. I will be rich! When you don't see a logo on a TV show, it's not because the company didn't want their product to be shown, it's because they didn't pay for it to be shown. Fun fact. 
So Pepsi didn't pay us, so I need to remove this logo. There, I've destroyed all of the TV illusions for you. Also, ice cream is lard. We're gonna use these soda bottles to filter out the water. I'm gonna make a multi-stage system like this, so we can have the different elements and then drip down into a ready-to-drink receptacle, just like a coffee machine. Okay, I'm gonna use the coffee filter, two stages. I'm putting it on the outside because if you put it on the inside, it's hard to get it to line it very well and some water might get around it. If I put it on the end like this, the water has no choice but to go through it. It's a carbon taco. Yeah, I'm not gonna breathe that. Okay, we have charcoal. Now we're gonna add some sand. Mmm, delicious. Water filter is basically making your own ground because you know that's what happens with the ground. Like the water goes through it, all the whatevers are sucked out of the water into the earth and then apparently the clean water is down under the ground and then you put a well down there and then it's like a circle. And then gravel. So we're basically taking out the large particulates with the gravel, the finer particulates with the sand, and then capturing impurities with the carbon. I'm gonna secure this next stage and then fill it with components as well. I actually asked a friend of a friend about this particular creek and she's like, oh yeah, I did a report on that creek. Would you like to know exactly what's in it? And I'm like, no. It's like, never go to the hot dog factory if you like hot dogs. I guess we could, because it's Madison. We could, we could go to a hot dog factory if we wanted. Oh, this is gonna take forever because it's gonna drip into this. Then this has to saturate, then it has to go into this. But you know, it's a zombie apocalypse. You have nothing to do but sit around and, you know, the internet doesn't work, so you can't even like, you know, use steam. I guess you could play tic-tac-toe. The time lapse is complete. Here is our dirty crick water, our filtered crick water, and this is our control sample. This is a Brita filtered water that we have in the office there. Basically has no taste. Okay, I'm not gonna drink this. Well, it didn't taste awful. It had a little bit of an oily residue to it, so it wasn't as good as this, but I guess in a pinch, you could probably drink it and possibly not die. What you should really do with something like this is boil it after you filter it. So even if there are creepy crawlies in it, they're at least dead. What else should we build, Felix? What about a motorized propeller head that has mops on the blades, spins around and continuously washes our bodies? This way we stay clean. What is the point of staying clean during a zombie apocalypse? Doesn't matter if you're clean or dirty or slightly soiled, those things will bite you nevertheless. What we should do instead is try to make a crystal radio using all the magnet wire around here. That way we can hear if help is coming. To survive this zombie apocalypse, we're going to need information, and that can come from a radio. Now I've got one in my car, but that's out there where the zombies are. We're gonna have to build our own. I think we can make a crystal radio, which is a classic circuit that every little kid used to make at least. You only need a few parts, an antenna, which could be a bunch of wire, a coil, which can be wire wrapped around a tube, a diode, hopefully a low voltage one, like a germanium diode, an earpiece to listen to it, and some sort of tuning, either a variable capacitor or a rod that you can move up and down the coil. And then you connect the whole thing to ground. Let's scrounge around the shop and see what we can find. I grabbed this old pinball coil because I knew it would be filled with magnet wire. It's basically just a big electromagnet that pulls a rod into its center. And magnet wire is thin copper wire that is coated with enamel to act as an insulation. It's a cheap way of adding insulation and you can wrap it all up and not have it conduct to itself. It's a little harder to remove than uh, plastic insulation. You usually have to either burn off the ends or sand it off. Then of course I grabbed my toilet paper tube. We're going to use this to make the winding. 
Uh, 80 turns is pretty common for a crystal radio, so to be really lazy, instead of counting the turns, I'm going to measure the diameter of the wire, multiply it by 80, and then figure out how much space to actually wrap on my tube. The number of turns will affect the frequency that we can pick up, and it will only be in the AM range, because it's lower frequency, which is where AM is, rather than high frequency FM. All right, let's uh, get started. It is 0 0.016. The internet's out, so all I can use is my ancient calculator. 0 0.016 times 80 turns is 1.28 inches. It still works after all these years. See, this is why I have a dial caliper. So if there's a power outage, it still works. Yeah, I know that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> There we go. Time to start wrapping. There we go, 1.28 inches of winding. Hopefully it works, otherwise we're dead. All right, let's strip the ends. You can either sand these or burn off the enamel. I'll do both. Unfortunately, it makes this place smell like a dentist's office with like burnt enamel floating through the air. But that's what you gotta do in a zombie apocalypse. What if like an old person with dentures became a zombie and if they bit you, would that turn you into a zombie? That's a good question. I'm gonna use my multimeter, which thankfully runs off batteries to check the uh, conductivity of this. 25 ohms, and that also tells us that there is connectivity through the whole thing. No breaks. The next big thing we need to find is a diode. Not just any standard diode, but a germanium diode, because it needs to be a low voltage diode. Um, when you put voltage across a diode, you have a voltage drop, usually like hmm, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 volts. That's not gonna work for crystal radio. I think I might know where a germanium diode is though. This is my old electronics kit that I've had for a long, long, long time. You can see I wrote my name on it as like a five-year-old or six-year-old or whatever. I, point is my handwriting was terrible and now it's not much better. Anyway, these kits you know, had all sorts of fun experiments and there was usually always a crystal radio in the experiments. So, yep, right there, a germanium diode. I knew we'd find one here. I don't wanna detach the diode from the kit because it's been there for like 34 years. So I'm going to attach the coil to it. Okay, so this is also gonna to go to the antenna. So we're gonna go through the diode. The diode will square off the wave and turn it into DC that we can pick up on the microphone. And the other side of the coil will go to the other side of the microphone as well as ground. And by ground, I mean earth ground. Um, I'm not gonna stick it in the third prong of an outlet. I'll probably use something a little safer like the sink. Uh, let's see, we're gonna need a earpiece, and they used to have those crystal radio earpieces that could run off very low power. Um, I'm pretty sure I don't have one of those, but I think I can use a piezo. This piezo should work with a crystal radio. I'm going to attach a straw to it to make it into a rudimentary earpiece, and hopefully not poke my eardrum in the process. I'll just mark the right length. This is far from the strangest thing I've ever done in my life. I'm ready to join the Secret Service. The whole building is enclosed with metal, so we've had to brave the outdoors in order to get a good signal. I have the kit hooked up to a ground, the water faucet, and we have this loop antenna that I can raise in the air. Let's see if I can pick anything up. No, just political talk. It's even worse than zombies. <laughs> oh, 
movida. I don't speak Spanish, even if there are zombie help instructions on that channel, I'm screwed. But what if we weren't lucky enough to have a variable capacitor here in order to change the channel? Well, I think we can do it by changing the tap point on the coil itself. Let's give that a try. I'm going to sand off a bare copper area along the entire length of this coil. And this will give us multiple contact points. That's probably enough to get us a range. Now we're going to try tuning using just the coil itself. It's been sanded off so we can use this tap to hit different points of the coil to change the frequency. And this tap is what's going to the diode now. And the other ends of the coil are still antenna and ground. Let's see if it works. I'm going to hook this microphone directly into my lav so you can hear what we find. There's a pretty clear Menards ad for you. Now we have a way to get information from the outside world. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's complicate this project even further by trying to make our own diode. Here's how we're gonna do it, World War I style. We're going to take a razor blade. We don't have like a Gillette blade around here, but we do have X-Acto knife blades that we can blue by heating them up. And then we'll take a mechanical pencil lead. They would either use pencil lead or a piece of thin wire known as a cat's whisker and attach that to form our own rudimentary diode and see if that works with the crystal radio. This is a piece of mechanical pencil graphite and we've attached a wire to it and we're hopefully gonna make a diode out of this. <laughs> we'll see. I am soldering some of these connections to give us the best chance for success. And we're also gonna use the um, variable capacitor again, just because it is a little bit more consistent than trying to tune using the coil alone. We know the rest of the circuit works. We're just gonna see if our crazy diode will work. We're now trying the old World War I trick of creating a diode by going from a piece of graphite or cat's whisker into a razor blade. Now the old razor blades they would have back then would be blued steel. So what we did was we heated up some X-Acto knives to create our own blued steel. I'm sure it has to do with the chemical reaction that actually occurs on the surface that creates the blue. And uh, I'm surprised that I can actually hear something. I didn't really expect this to work. What about a device that keeps our cars clean? What is your obsession with cleanliness during a zombie apocalypse? No, what we really need to do is figure out a way to keep the zombies from getting close. That way, our cars will stay clean because there won't be zombie guts on them. That's the third project. Early warning zombie detection system and a way to scare them backwards into the darkness from whence they came. They killed my beloved wife, my only son, and bit my dog. Now we need to find a way to stop the zombies from getting in the shop. I have an idea though. We have a lot of infrared motion sensors laying around. We can tie one of those to a microcontroller and then send a short pulse to a DC gear motor, which could trigger some sort of deterrent system like a net thrower or a Nerf gun. That should stop the zombies from getting in. Let's set it up. This is the infrared motion detector. You put five volts into it along with ground and then it will send out a signal, a high pulse, lasting about one second if it sees movement. That high pulse is gonna go into this Arduino here. And once it sees it, the Arduino is going to blink the lights and also pulse this piezo to sound an alarm. Along with that, it'll send a short pulse to this TIP-102. A TIP-102 is a Darlington transistor array. It's basically a pair of transistors that will give you a higher gain or you know, drop a higher voltage. In this case, we're going to sync a higher current through the motor, through the TIP-102, triggered by the Arduino, and then use that to activate our zombie deterrent. You use an external transistor like that when you want to control something that requires more voltage or more current than your microcontroller can supply. We have a battery pack so we can put this anywhere we need to stop the zombies, and there's a power switch to arm the system. There is a slight false reading when you turn on the infrared detector for the first time, so we're gonna put a two second delay at the beginning of the program. That way it won't false fire just because it's been turned on. But after that, watch out. Felix, I need you to take the zombie strike Nerf gun and mount it to some foam core along with a rod actuator so we can shoot some zombies. Kick it!
We've prepared the auto turret. We're gonna use this Nerf gun. You can load it up here. Put in some anti-zombie rounds. Then we've got a lever on the trigger and that's gonna go back to a 3D printed wheel with a gear motor that should have plenty of force to pull the trigger. So basically when the infrared detector sees something, it'll do like a short quarter second pulse, which will be long enough to rotate this and pull the trigger. Zombie dead. I'm gonna hook up the motor negative to the tip, positive to the battery. That way, when the tip is activated, seven volts will flow through the motor, triggering our zombie stopper. I'm gonna put a wall loop in the beginning of the setup max. Well, digital read input pin equals one, and then you should never have a null loop. So let's do that. So it will wait two seconds, then it will wait until there is no signal coming off of the sensor, then it will wait another three seconds. Time for a test. Oh. Hey, everybody! Oh, just a typical. <laughs> Clean, pure water. I think we have this zombie situation pretty much sorted. Plus, pure, wholesome, educational country music is drifting over the airwaves and into our crystal radio. Oh, Ben, that works for you. But I'm still dirty, my car is still dirty, my feet still make noise. I'm fairly perturbed right now. Felix, you need to learn to live in the moment. And right at this moment, life is good. Why, in fact, there's nary a zombie in sight. Oh, crap. Felix, go see what's going on out there while I run and hide like a cowardly possum snake belly worm that I am. It was just a UPS guy all along. I knew there wasn't ain't no zombie apocalypse from the start. Oh, come on. We could have made those soundproof shoes. Everything would have been fine. Quit with the shoes. I'm tired of it. You know that. Just help me unlock this door. And some of that was on you. You made this happen. <laughs> not very professional, Max. I'm not sure if that's something I want to devote time to. <laughs> Cowardly possum snake belly worm that I am. <laughs> we need to overcomplicate this project even further. <laughs> You're making me laugh. Felix, go figure out what's going on while I run and hide like a coward. <laughs> that assumptions will be made based off little or no evidence. Little or no facts, man. God damn it. Oh. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.